Hello world, I'm Ralph and on this awesome day I welcome you to Hex 1E. Let's take a look at what we've got for you this time. A lot has happened since I last worked on, the, on this machine. Mainly, I kind of managed to kind of sell most of the hardware of the OG build. My wife wasn't too happy when I told her about this development. But that also means that we're kind of building a brand new gaming and some professional usage machine. Let's go over our hard comp hardware components first. Our CPU of choice for this build is an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. As we do prefer 8 cores to 6 cores for productivity, and there is no real successor to our last gen favorite R7 3700X, this chip is the closest and, as of writing, the lone 8 core CPU for the current Ryzen 5000 series. It features a base clock of 3.8 GHz with a boost of up to 4.7, 4 MEX of level 2 and 36 MEX of level 3 cache, and will be dealing with a max TDP of 105 watts. As for the board, we'll be using the more balanced B550 chipset in the form of the Gigabyte B550 Oros Pro V2. I really liked the V1 version, for its good feature set, excellent VRM, as well as real fent heatsinks, but there are some issues with it. The newer board fixes these issues, so yeah. The GPU will be the Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti Oros Extreme Water Force Water Block, <sighs> which as we mentioned in part 1, is the exact same card as the regular Extreme, not gonna repeat the whole name here, but instead of the air cooler it comes pre-fitted with a water block. The other necessary components, not mentioned here, will be taken over from her previous build. We kind of have a lot to do. And this is where I would normally start building a test setup and test all the components the hardware for a few days, but this time I'm skipping it. It's my wife's computer and it's, it's kinda, kinda gonna stay at home, so it'd be quite easy for me to fix it directly if there were to be any problems. So, let's begin, shall we? Let's put all this aside. First, put away the water cooling components. Now we have the GPU and enough space for our case. Our case is Fractal's Meshify 2. I liked the previous Meshify S2 and heard good things about the new one. Also, the matte grey color will fit this build perfectly. With our case laid bare, we finally have the space to stuff everything inside. During the speed build, I'll be going over my build notes. Let's go over my notes while the system gets assembled. Where do I begin? Okay. I had lots of time to plan out the build and wanted to use the OG case for that, but after taking a look at it from the inside, I chose to get a new case instead. Because I didn't have the case in, at hand, it made it difficult to, uh, to get everything right for that case. I used the old Meshify S2 and the Define 7 from my other server as a starting point and took all the measurements once I had unboxed it. Everything kind of worked out in the end, so no complaints here. To the case itself, I really liked the top removal radiator tray. It made life so much easier, and the system Fractal is now using is better than what they had used before, which made it pretty complicated to mount wide units. Talking about wider radiators, I had to remove the two aft clamps for holding the, on the side panel to fit the non-classic EK Coolstream 361. It works out, just something to keep in mind. One thing, which was also mentioned in other publications, is that the only way to fix a side panel with a screw is by removing the front panel. I think a simple thumb screw on the back of the case would have been better, the better choice here. 
I don't build cases, so I don't know if this would have been possible or complicated things too much. But I thought I would mention it anyway. As for the other components, everything went great and I had no problem fitting these inside. The only thing worth mentioning is that if you go for a push-pull config for the front rad, you'll be limited in the length of your GPU. But that's the case with almost every other case. No pun intended. I'd like to wait for after I installed the tubing to give my final verdict on the Meshify 2 though. One last thing I wanted to mention is that the B550 Oros Pro V2 doesn't come with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. I used an add-in card for that purpose. If you choose an N2 adapter card and a separate Wi-Fi Bluetooth module, keep in mind that you'll have to connect that card to a USB header on the board for the Bluetooth to work. As you can see, I have no computer here. But uh, I think now I have an image of the finished build. Well, the components are now assembled. The only thing that's missing is to finish up the loop. But I think it's a great time to take a break now and continue in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like. And if you're interested or curious on how this build turned out, or want to, don't want to miss any of our other future content, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that, and hit that notification bell. My name is Ralph. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you next time here at X1E.